So there is a brand new PTZ camera option out there and it literally fits in the palm of your hand. Well, well, kind of. It is in this small of a case. We're gonna open it up and show you what it is. It is the OBSBOT Tail Air PTZ camera. And this is the little device right there. It is so small, it is so compact. It's got a 4K sensor. And we're gonna talk about it today and just answer the question, does this have a place in your church production setup or what would it be great for? We'll talk about that in today's video. So this camera launched from OBSBOT back in late November, around November 21st. They launched it with a GoFundMe campaign, and now it is fully launched. You can order it from their website. The link will be in the description, and the price is absolutely amazing. But before we get into price and before we get into kind of our final judgment on how good this camera is, let's quickly run through the top features that I think churches will be interested in, and then we're going to look at those features more in depth look at some sample footage and just see how and where this would be a great addition to a live streaming setup. And the first thing that really, really impressed me when I tested out this camera is that it has auto tracking, but it's backed not just by, you know, follow the subject, but it's actually backed by artificial intelligence. And when I say it's backed by AI, the framing of this is probably the most impressive auto tracking that I've seen out of any camera uh, any PTZ camera, bar none. It's buttery smooth. It's really amazing. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then it also has this thing called AI director grids where it kind of uses its auto tracking engine, but it gives you a choice of a bunch of different um, framing options where with a click of a button or a click of a tap of an app, it will it will kind of go into that frame close up, you know, medium range or whatever, and still have the subject in view. And it moves through those frames at a very intentional way one of the great things about this is if you're using the AI auto tracking it's always going to be on you and it's always going to be framed really good but you can actually use gesture controls so the artificial intelligence can read your hand and and you can tell it to start recording stop recording start auto tracking stop auto tracking you can do all of those things simply with hand gestures it's got uh ndi if you if you buy an ndi license which is 99 dollars, it's a 99 dollar upgrade but it's got ndi hx um capabilities in it it also has a micro hd HDMI output. So if you're using like an A10 Mini Pro or A10 Mini Extreme, it's got Visca support. You can control this with your regular joystick controller. It's got USB connection. It's got wireless. You can control it and you can bring NDI over wireless if you have, you know, the, the bandwidth to do that. It has a USB to Ethernet adapter. So if you wanted to bring that USB to Ethernet in there, you could do that as well, especially if you're running NDI that will do it. And it's got PoE. So one cable to this camera, you can bring it through NDI and you can power it. It also can do uh, RTSP and RTMP if you wanted to stream directly to something, but for most churches, they're gonna be running it through their system. It's also got a 4K sensor in it. It is a small sensor. You can see it's a very small form factor, so it's not got a large professional broadcast quality sensor in it, but we're gonna talk about quality here in a minute. We're gonna talk about its low light performance, which is actually pretty good for such a camera of this size. It's incredibly easy to use and control with the app. The app is actually pretty amazing. It also has add-on accessories like a, a joystick controller that kind of fits in the palm of your hand and can control the cameras. And they're gonna be coming out with more accessories later because you can see it's got the uh, the connection here so that they can add more accessories as this product matures in its life cycle. Right now it's, it's brand new. There's gonna be more. And it's got a battery. I didn't mention that. It's got a battery inside that lasts quite a bit. So if you have to go outside, it's got a battery. And it also has a micro um, SSD slot so we, you can record directly like in-camera recording, which most PTZ cameras don't do that. So this has a ton of features in this tiny, tiny little body. So let's talk about the most important features I think that churches would be interested in and see, is it really good at what it does? Let's take a look. So the first question that 
everybody's going to ask when it comes to setting up a church live stream is what's the image quality like? And that's that's really my first question too. When when um, Obsbot sent me this, by the way, full disclosure, Obsbot did send me this. They asked me to make a review video. They, they didn't tell me that it had to be positive and they're not holding me up for any kind of, uh, you know, they're not making me say certain positive things. So I'm just giving you my, my honest opinion, but they did send me this for free. So if that matters at all, there you go. The image quality is really what I wanted to test out. It actually does admirably in low light. And so at our church, the light is is pretty bad. We keep the sanctuary kind of dark and uh, we light the platform, but the light on the platform is actually very spotty. Our church as a testing ground is probably the toughest test that this camera is going to get. And so you can tell, especially when it's a long ways away, um, when you're using the zoom feature and zooming in, it is a digital zoom. It's not optical zoom. We were zooming in quite a bit as far as we could because this is sitting, um, you know, 30, 40 feet back from the platform. And so with that being said, the image quality that I saw, it was good. It was not great. When you use the digital zoom, it gets very, very fuzzy in low light, which a lot of churches, even those that are well lit, is kind of considered low light because there's going to be dark spots. There's going to be different colored lights and stuff like that that this has to battle with. It's not going to be great if you place it a long ways away. If you place it 20, 30, 40, 50 feet away, you're going to be stretching the limits and probably getting noisy footage with this camera. It just does not have the sensor size to capture a lot of light. And so it's kind of using it in a way it's not meant to be used. Where this does shine and where the image quality I think is really, really good is if you can get it up close and personal, if you can get it within, you know, 10, five feet from the subject, it, it can do a very wide shot where it's, it's not having to use its digital zoom, but still getting a good frame. You're gonna have really good image quality from this, even in what I would consider low light. It is digital zoom. It's not meant to be a zooming camera so much, even though the, the feature is there if you need it, but it's it's meant to sit, you know, pretty close to, to the subject. Um, but let's talk about the AI auto tracking because this is what really blew me away. One of the complaints that I've always had about the auto tracking when it comes to PTZ cameras is that they've focused in on controlling the camera and keeping the subject kind of in the middle of the frame. There'll be a lot of headroom above the one that's being tracked. And so it's like your eyes are in the very center of the screen, but there's half a screen up above that's not showing anything because it's, it's just not a good frame. Another complaint that I get quite often from people that are relying on auto tracking is that from these PTZ cameras, it's often kind of jerky especially if someone moves a little bit this way and fakes out the camera and they move this way and then quickly come back this way, the camera starts to move and then jerks back over. And so it can, it can seem like, like a, a computer trying to follow a subject. And some of that is, you know, the talent has to learn to operate within the parameters of the auto tracking. So some of it is the person on screen not working well with the auto tracking algorithm. This thing though, the auto tracking is buttery smooth and you can set the frame that you want and it control it, it auto tracks within that framing. It's the best auto tracking system that I have ever seen bar none in a PTZ camera. And I'm wondering why Obsbot can put that AI system inside this tiny little machine and a PTZ camera that's, you know, five or six times the size of this, they're still having trouble getting auto tracking right. What I recommend for all PTZ camera manufacturers, I would get this and test it out, learn it, and try to rip it off <laughs> because it's literally the best auto tracking. So if you're doing anything where you need auto tracking um, and you want it to look professional, I tested it out. I tested it out up close. I tested it with Zoom. I walked back and forth. I tried to be fast. And um, I was super impressed at how this handled the auto tracking. So if you need auto tracking and I'm thinking of like a teacher in front of a whiteboard or something like this, I would get this camera, even if I had to put it on a mount and put it in front of my audience and the audience could actually see the camera. Um, I would do that because if I need auto tracking, this is the best system out there that I've ever seen. So let's talk about final opinions. Is this camera any good? I would say it is an excellent choice for a conference room. It's an excellent choice for a school. It might even be an excellent choice for, you know, a sports venue. Like I'm thinking tennis or soccer where you don't have to zoom in a lot. You're kind of wanting the wide shots of everything. You can track the players, things like that, where you're not having to deal with zoom too much. 
I think it's an excellent choice um, for a conference room. Why get a giant PTZ when you can when you can have this tiny little thing? But I don't think it's going to replace the regular PTZs in a church auditorium because you're looking at PTZs that are sitting 50 to 100 feet away from the stage, and they really need that 30x optical zoom rather than a digital zoom to get up and get the frames that they want from that distance. So I don't think this is going to replace your PTZ cameras in a normal church, normal auditorium or performance hall. It's just not, it just doesn't have the zooming capabilities to do that. And if they, if they spent the money on a lens to do that, the price of this would go really high. So I don't think it's a great use for church, like main cameras. However, where it is a great use, and this is where I think churches are really going to love this and should probably put it into their um, arsenal is in creative shots. Um, so, a lot of churches, they use these little static cams. They'll set them next to like the keyboard player or they'll put them in the drum cage or something like that. But it's just a static shot that they can cut to. It's a very small camera. It doesn't have a big footprint. And so, you know, people usually don't notice it. This should replace all of those, in my opinion. If, you, if you're using like um, band cameras, this should be your, your choice. Because um, think about it in a drum cage. You have a static shot. It's trying to get the drummer and some of his drums and you cut to that every now and then, but it's the same shot over and over. If you replace that static camera with this, you can get that static shot, but you can also, um, you know, pan out and get the drums. You can get a close up of the snare, a close up of the hi hat. You can, you know, maybe zoom past, look out the drum cage at the rest of the band. You can do all kinds of interesting things with this. And not only that, it's magnetic. So if you have anything metal in your drum cage, you can just plop this on it and you don't have to have a crazy mount or anything and it, it's going to work upside down um, if you don't have anything magnetic it is so lightweight and so small you could put heavy duty velcro on this and put it virtually anywhere and uh, and it's got so much versatility not only that if you're using ndi you can do um, poe and ndi through the same cable and you got one cable running to this, you can put it anywhere. I think in a church, the band cameras is where this is going to really, really shine and uh, and be an amazing addition and the cost of it is gonna make it even better. Another way that you could use this is like in, in dramas or skits or something like that where you want a camera, you can hide this in a tree, you can hide it literally anywhere and get creative views for your audience that's watching on live stream or even um, recording the video. If your church does a drama at Easter or Christmas and you want to get some creative shots without, you know, having a big camera or a cameraman up on stage with Mary and Joseph, you can plop this anywhere in the manger and get a good shot of, of Mary and Joseph. You know, it's just so versatile. And because you can do POE NDI um, or, or HDMI from it. I think this is the creative camera for churches, bar none. Do I really need creative shots? Um, I always say like, try going to church, sit down in the pew and look forward. And then you cannot move your eyes or your head for the rest of the service. It's just, that's the view you get. How boring would it be? Would you, would you be able to last the entire service before giving up? Um, but no, but you, you expect your live stream audience to do that with a static, you know, one camera view. Um, that's why creative shots, you know, when, when you're watching in person and people are singing, you'll look at the lead singer, you'll look at, you'll flat, you know, focus in on their face. You'll look at the entire band. You'll focus at the whole band. You'll look over at the, at the drummer. You'll look at his drumsticks. You'll look at the cymbal. And effectively, what you're doing is you're going through preset shots. You're framing things up. You're zooming in on the cymbal. You're zooming in on the drumsticks. You're uh, looking at the guitarist, and you're seeing him at a wide angle, but then you're looking at his hands on the fret, and uh, you're zooming in on that. Your eyes are doing these kind of things naturally the entire time. And so having creative shots where, you know, it's like, well, that's just superfluous. That's not needed. No, it's not needed. But if you have them, you're able to replicate the experience of being somewhere in person so much better. And it makes your live stream so much more interesting. It keeps people's attention. So they're not just like, you know, with blinders on, having to focus on one thing and, and their eyes getting bored with it after a while. And so if you can put these shots in, um, it'll make your live stream, it'll make your recording so much more interesting and uh, your, your viewers will like it more. This is an amazing camera in a small, small package, and it's only 499 
This is so cheap, so affordable, and so amazing in such a small package that if you need some creative like baptistry cameras, you can auto track the, the person being baptized or the baptizer. You know, you can put this in the baptistry and get that creative shot without breaking the bank and getting another camera. If you if you have classrooms, if you have any any kind of creative things like that where you need a camera that can perform well but not be expensive, it's just a really great camera. And I'm not saying that because they sent it to me. I'm really that excited about it. I think at our church, we have a piece of trussing right next to our keyboard. I think I'm just gonna magnet, magnetically just plop this up on the truss and let it get the keyboard, maybe the audience, you know, and just get some creative shots. So do I recommend the camera? Yes. Do I recommend it in all situations? No, but it's a great camera. Hopefully I've answered all of your potential questions. And uh, if you have any more questions, just let us know in the comments below. If you wanna go buy it, the link is in the description and this video is already way longer than I thought it would be, but uh, it's an amazing camera. Go buy it. We'll see you on the next video.